Hello, everybody. I think we're live. Let's see here. Do I have to do something on? Should I be doing something on Facebook to tell people that I'm here? Uh, you certainly can. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, I, I, I just pulled it up. We are live on Facebook now. So, oh, nice. Okay. Hello, Facebook. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'd love to be saying welcome to the Spotlight Theater as I usually do. But welcome to my basement office. Um, we are I'm in my, welcome to my basement office too. In Austin's uh, basement office, um, we are so excited for this new series of uh, live Q and As that we have coming up here. We have uh, quite a few people lined up now that uh, we're really excited about. But we are super excited to be starting this whole series with the one and only Austin Titchener of the Reduce Shakespeare Company. Uh, actor, performer, writer, uh, director, playwright, podcaster, husband, father. Raconteur, man about town, gad about rogue, yep. villain. Uh, uh, yep. Angle All file, as you can tell by my tea mug. <laughs> yes, very, very scary there. <laughs> um, so we are going to be... Um, taking any kind of live questions on Facebook and pop up. Um, but in the meantime, uh, how are you doing? What, I know you're in Chicago. What is, what's the city of Chicago like now? Well, I'm in the, I'm in the Northern burbs where it's fairly quiet. Um, I haven't gone into the city. We've been, I guess we started self quarantining a week ago, Saturday. Uh, but that, um, but that got, uh, the the quarantine clock got reset to zero when our daughter came home uh from college, oh, yeah. uh sunday night so um uh you know god knows i i see that the roads are empty pretty much uh people are staying mostly indoors or or, play, or staying far away from each other when they're out um yeah. we're trying to order as much takeout as we can to help support the restaurants that are trying to stay open but or only offer delivery and takeout yeah, so yeah, that's a that's a big thing here too. A lot of people yeah. order and take out and curbside pickup and that just to help the the local restaurants. We yeah, we needed uh, 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 dry cat food yesterday, and I and I walked up and I went, oh no, it's closed. Oh wait, oh curbside delivery. <laughs> so <laughs> she brought it out and put it in the back of my car, and I I waved my phone at her, you know, uh, electronic thing, Gizmo, and yeah. paid for it and was off. So yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a brave new world, and hopefully it's a a, a brave new temporary world. Yeah, no kidding. It's yeah, a bummer, no. but it's a bummer for you guys. I mean, we had to cancel. We've canceled five performances in four oh, five. Okay. in four cities: two in Reston, one at Washington Jefferson College in Pennsylvania, one in Whitewater, uh, Wisconsin, and one at uh, Batavia, Illinois, the Fermi Lab. Um, oh, where yeah. we. we yeah, we're rescheduling all of them to 2021, but the rest in performance will be in uh, in July. You know, fingers crossed, unless this thing right. gets worse. Well, yeah, that's uh, the, our our current show. While it's now it was set for April 17th uh, was the opening, but I mean, with not being able to rehearse, that just almost makes it impossible. But um, yeah, our next show then would be June, and that's even now we're like, oh gosh, yeah. I hope. We can make it to that. It's just so everything's unknown right now. That's the, the most kind of frustrating and scary part about it. Right. Because there's no plan because the people who would put together a plan were fired two year, two or three years ago, whatever it was. Um, right. Yeah. But we don't have to go there. Uh, uh, well, and we're supposed to be at the Hartford stage doing the complete history of comedy abridged um, from June 11th to June 21st. And fingers crossed that's going to still happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I guess on the on the upside, you guys don't have rehearsal the whole rehearsal process, right? Leading up to that to worry about, so that's good. And, and we don't have a large overhead with, in terms of staff, um, right? So you know, so this and, and the good news, bad news is we didn't have that many gigs this spring to cancel anyway. So, <laughs> but that's a different issue. Um, yeah. what, what's exciting though is that the spring of winter, spring of a year from now is looking great. <laughs> yeah, really. If we could just survive till then. Yeah. Well, that's, I was trying to think the last time I saw you guys, I think was, um, 
I think was in Reston for the the extravaganza. That's right. That's the, right. That, that was really fun. We Reston. Yeah. I mean, if if anybody's listening who doesn't know this, the Reston, um, the Reston Center stage uh, at the Reston Community Center in Reston, Virginia, is just outside D.C. It's near Dulles Airport, and it, it has been a friend and a home to the Reduce Shakespeare Company since before I joined in '92, and since before Reed joined in '89. <laughs> it's been, oh, wow. They've been booking the RSC since like '88, every year, and so five or six years ago. They, it was, it was sitting, we were sitting around after a show at dinner, after a show with the rest of the people talking about, wouldn't it be fun to get up? We talked about all the actors in the Reduce Shakespeare Company that had come through the various shows in the various years. And we said, wouldn't it be fun if we could get them all together to do a show? And then light bulb, light bulb, light bulb went off and went off. And we started going, we could call it an extravaganza. And we did <laughs> eight of the current, of the then 10 shows. We did eight of the 10 shows over two long weekends. Uh, with an additional evening, much like what we're doing right now, of Q and A yeah. and and uh, bits bits and songs from the shows and bits we had cut from <laughs> that didn't quite make <laughs> the grade and um, and that was really fun. That was two weeks of really really heavy. I, I understand that was the first time I understood what air traffic controllers go through <laughs> because the number. Well, I remember I remember seeing you guys backstage because I mean. You and Reed performed the majority of the shows. Mm -hmm. I think there was only the one that you didn't weren't in. Maybe I think there were two. But I go ahead. You which one were you in? Books? No, you were in uh, Bible. No, you were in the complete works. No, no books. Books. I think it was books. Okay. Yeah, it was either book. It would have been books or Bible. Okay. One of those two. But I remember seeing you guys backstage, and it was just. I mean, it just, you guys backstage were like, I could tell you were exhausted and the brain was on overload because it shows, I mean, you guys hadn't done in years. A couple of them we hadn't done in a very, very long time. And uh, yeah. and I did not do the Bible show. So it was you and Michael Faulkner and, okay. uh, and, yeah. and Mick Orff. It was Bible. It yeah. was Bible. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm just remembering that I have a picture of the three of us backstage in costume. Okay. It yeah. Was Bible. Uh, and I know that because we did the Bible like two years ago, and I none of us had none of us had done it at the extravaganza. So some of us hadn't done it in eight or nine years, and that was really right, like, yeah. oh no. And <laughs> and and you realized as you learned as we redid the lines from each show, you go, oh, I used this setup in about three different shows, <laughs> and a version <laughs> of this punchline in like three different shows. Uh, oh well, <laughs> learning a lot about myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it works, don't uh, don't break it. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, you've done. Um, the Spotlight did all the great books, didn't you? We did. That was actually our very first show. Um, it was kind of a, a soft opening. So since then, we have not done a, a kind of a straight play. Oh, I see. Um, it, it's all been big musicals okay. since then. So, but we said, well, this will kind of be a nice, uh, just kind of soft opening, and. Um, I mean, we thought, what better show to do? Yeah. And we had actually, my son and other friends did the Bible show at another theater here locally a couple years prior to that. And uh -huh. um, so uh, one of the guys was out of town. He was touring with some show called Kinky Boots. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he was out of town. So we got, I directed the Shakespeare show at one of the local colleges so I grabbed one of the kids from there, one of the guys from the Bible show, and I said, we're doing the book show. And so <laughs> it just, it so happened, though, that that show, I ended up playing the professor role, which oh, is you. My part. And yeah. Yeah. So that was different for me. But uh, but now it's so funny because that show now, I feel like I could do in my sleep uh, probably every role. I, I feel like I've done it so many times. Just one of those shows where it's like as soon as you get back into it, you're like, oh yeah, this is how it goes. Right, and muscle memory takes over there. <clears throat> you, yeah. In, rehe in the rehearsal hall, you can't remember how this goes, but in performance, with all the adrenaline and the audience and the timing, you go, oh, I, of course, I, this is how it goes. It goes like this. Right. So, yeah. Because you performed that show, uh, we 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 perf you performed that show in Belgium. That was the first time we hired you, right? Uh, it was Holland first. Holland. We went all through Holland. Yep. And then a couple months after that, we went to Belgium. And then I want to say it was like two two years after that, 
we took Hollywood to Holland and Belgium right. at, the, at the same time. I mean, we went to Belgium and then went right to Holland from there. Right. Since we were right there. Um, and you worked with um, uh, Noah, um, Noah Brody. Noah Brody. Noah yeah. Brody in that yeah. in that company. It's so I, it's so great that so many of our Drew Shakespeare Company alums are now moving on to run their own theaters. You're running Spotlight, and uh, and Noah's yeah. the co artistic director of Fiasco Theater, which is on yeah, Broadway. Doing... I I want to say taking the productions uh, of Into the Woods and elsewhere. <laughs> right. I remember the Into the Woods thing was a big deal for them. That in um uh, is it Cymbeline? Cymbeline, yeah. Your Cymbeline, yeah. Um. That that was a big hit for them too. I I don't know currently what they're doing, but I know they've been doing really well. Him yeah. and his wife um, yeah. running that theater. Cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, I have my first question. Ooh, online. exciting! I don't know. See, oh. I'm I'm so old. I don't know how to even look on Facebook on my phone to see where this this is all happening. Well, and this is uh. My first time doing this. A big shout out to to Greg Hipskin at the QC Rock Academy uh, here in the Quad Cities for walking me through this whole thing. Oh, cool! Um, he got me set up with the, how to how to do this uh, today. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Um, now, how do I find it on my phone? Uh, if you go go to the Spotlight Theaters Facebook page, yes, and then our video should be on there right now. Okay, I'm on my phone, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, check in. I've checked in. Uh, oh, that's not this... what it wants me to do. Doesn't matter. Let's. Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the first question comes from somebody we both know. Her name is Sarah Tubbs. Oh, how is Sarah Tubbs? She's good. She's upstairs baking right now. The Lynn Fontan to your Alfred Lunt. The two of you are the Lunt Fontans of the Quad Cities. Powerful <laughs> actor, entrepreneurs, directors, director managers, actor managers. Very impressive. <laughs> what is young Sarah's question? Her her question is, what is your favorite reduced Shakespeare show to perform? Uh, to perform. Hmm. Well, it's like asking, Sarah, it's like asking you, which one is your favorite child? Well, and I know the answer. It's obviously the prettiest, most talented one. Duh. Yeah. Um, the one. It's the, <clears throat> a lot of them are different. Are fun for different reasons. Bible is really fun because it just moves. <laughs> you yeah. get to you get to that song at the end of Act One. You go, oh my god, here we're already all close to intermission. <clears throat> it just moves. Um, I love all the great books, but Act One goes on a little long. <clears throat> um, uh, 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 the um. Christmas show, the ultimate Christmas show abridged is really fun. Uh, it's a really fun show because it's fun to perform because unlike any of our other shows, uh, the entire audience comes in wanting the, sa wanting the same thing <clears throat> and a, a funny show with a little heart, but also knowing exactly the same thing as everybody else knows about what we're talking about, about Christmas. Because everybody knows Christmas. Even the Jews know about Christmas. Everybody, even the Jews and the Muslims know about Christmas. <clears throat> and then we cover, but we cover all the winter holidays. And uh, uh, so we have Hanukkah and we have uh, Ramadan and, and, and we cover them respectfully, but irreverently and with, there's a touch of heart. And so you don't have to win people over. Everybody comes into the, the beginning of that show from the jump, knowing what they want for a holiday show. So it's a really fun show to do. I also love doing um, the two most recent shows, uh, uh, um, uh, William Shakespeare's long lost first play, Abridged, and uh, Hamlet's big adventure, a prequel, um, which are deconstructions of Shakespeare's complete works and also the prequel to Hamlet, which answers all those important questions that you've come out of a theater, you've come out of productions of Hamlet wondering like well where's Lil where is ophelia's mother what happened to her why does nobody even talk about her is polonius her first name or her last name uh, his first name is the last um is is uh, it, what was yorick like and so in hamlet's big adventure you get to see a young hamlet you'd be good for a young hamlet brett tubbs um uh you get to see a I young hamlet all the time. yeah I, i'm sure you do um <laughs> People get people. Uh, uh, Hamlet gets to d deal with his um, uh, his father, who's alive, who's a practical joker, and used to and he likes to leap out from behind plants in a sheet, going boo. 
And uh, Yorick the Jester is alive and very funny, but uh, kind of doesn't like his job. And uh, and Hamlet and Ophelia have this real kind of will they, won't they kind of, uh, you see the possibilities of a real um, affection and love there. Um, but then, spoiler alert, Ophelia's mother dies, um, but her ghost won't go away. <laughs> um, and her her mother was the patron of the local nunnery, and because she has died, the nunnery is about to close. So Hamlet, Ophelia, and Yorick are forced to put on a show to save the nunnery. <laughs> so that was both that was both things favorite shows I love to perform and plugs. Yeah, that was good. That was good. <laughs> so I guess my question, because I have yet to see these two shows. That's right. Um, and, and there's a couple now, actually. I've not seen the com comedy abridged. Okay. Um, so th with these two new shows now, um, is it, would you say the structure of the show is very similar to the other? Is it, it is kind of a, a, a formula for all of the abridged shows. I would say that you follow. So would you say that it is that kind of formula as well? Yeah. Even though you're necessarily reducing a, a big subject. Um, yes. And, and I know that you are using formula in the most respectful possible way. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, it's. Um, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, they are. Well, uh, comedy, comedy and and. Um, Long Lost Shakes are it's the the plots of the plots of all the reduced Shakespeare Company shows are the same. It's three idiots trying to reduce an a, an, an impossibly large topic to two hours, and they don't know that it's impossible. So it's kind of charming to watch them do it. Uh, and that is and guess, that's what I meant by formula. Is that I guess is it the same character the character <laughs> archetypes that are in. Well, it shows. is the same character archetypes, and the archetypes are drawn from Commedia. So, or, Commedia or the Three Stooges, depending on how intelligent you want to sound. <laughs> um, there, there's basically one guy who's the boss, who's the enforcer, the Mo, um, uh, and that's typically Reed. There's one guy who's the smart guy, the 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 the, the uh, professore, the Larry, I guess, the one with the funny hair, uh, uh, and then there's the. Um, and then there's the fool, the Arlecchino, the 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 idiot man child, the the savant, the wise fool. Typically, that's that's typically a Brett Tubbs role uh, until he's stepping into my role as the professor. <clears throat> and in both comedy and long lost shakes, we took something massive, like it on all of our shows, and reduced them. Hamlet's big adventure, interestingly, is does n does away with that formula completely. We don't okay. have we don't have a framework. You, you, so all the other shows are hi, I'm I'm Reed, I'm Austin, I'm Brent, and we are the Reduced Shakespeare Company, right? And here's we're gonna we'll guide you through this, like it's like a vaudeville, but uh, Hamlet's Big Adventure, a prequel, is just a play. It basically just starts as a play, and um, and it's really fun. So it starts with wind and spooky ghosts, and you go, wait, am I watching Hamlet or Hamlet's Big Adventure? I mean, that's on purpose, <laughs> and. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's just a play, and 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 Reed and I had a conversation about that. He was going, "Well, is that going to seem weird to audiences who are a used to the kinds of shows we do? Uh, but also, is it going to be weird for audiences going, you know, don't we need to come out and explain why we are performing, like why this old guy is playing Ophelia?" And I said, "Well, what what other what other theater company or script apologizes for its cast, you know?" <laughs> Right. It yeah. won't always be us. Also, I mean that, but particularly with the last two shows, the two sh the Hamlet's Big Adventure and Long Lost Shakes, we're very conscious of the fact that our shows get done by other theaters, like by you guys and by high schools and by and and colleges and community groups and other professional theaters, and so we're aware that particularly in high schools and community venues, they want to get it, they want to be able to include as many people as they can. Yeah. And and there's always that element in the script of we don't have enough people. There's only three of us, whatever. And we you, you kind of have to monkey with that a little bit. <clears throat> and we just said, well, what if we just don't don't do that? And so uh, uh, both of them, long lost shakes, but even now Christmas, as I think about it, I mean there are opportunities to include many more people than just the three of us. And Hamlet's big adventure, we don't even do away with the archetypes. So for instance, I as the smart one, because uh, I wear glasses. 
Um, uh, I play both uh, the king, Hamlet's father, the king, and Ophelia. And that's not... You know, those are not the same kinds of roles. And in fact, the, when we did the workshop uh, out in California, uh, a woman named Jessica Romero played my role, and um, and she was Ophelia. And she was a way better, way more adorable Ophelia than me. Um, but and her king was, I think, I would argue, funnier than mine because she was a more comic king, and I'm a more of a kind of a legitimately authoritative king. You know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, is, uh, 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 go ahead. I was just going to say that actually leads, I got a question here, and it almost leads in perfectly to that, what you're just saying. Uh, this is from Lily, um, and she, what are your thoughts about female and non-binary folks performing your show? Love it. Love it. There's nothing, <clears throat> there's nothing, I mean, we, all the jokes, all we write, Reed and I write these plays so to, to, to make a living for ourselves so that we can perform them and be booked around the country to perform them. Uh, once they're out of our hands, they're open, they're widely open to interpretation. And so <clears throat> references to white guys or old white guys or three white guys can all be changed to whatever they need to be changed to. And the casting can be, uh, can be that, can be, as as diverse as you want to make it. I, again, that was we were very conscious of that in both Hamlet's Big Adventure and Long William Shakespeare's Long Lost First Play Bridge. We constructed it so th in such a way that we considered Ariel a female character and Puck a male character. But that's not set in stone. And in fact, Shakespeare doesn't say. Shakespeare doesn't talk about Puck's gender at all. I think Ariel is defined in the text as male. But I don't care about that sort of stuff. And I'm not sure most people do anymore. I mean, no, that's not true. I do see pedants, you know, sometimes on, like I, I write I write a monthly blog for the Folger Shakespeare Library. And I sometimes see the comments where the comments say, uh, uh. <laughs> no, it's done <laughs> this way, only this way. Like uh, no, if, if it were only done one way, Shakespeare wouldn't be still relevant 400 years ago. All um, right. I have no, I have no uh, a delusion that reduced Shakespeare's company scripts will be around in 400 years. But for the next 100 years or so, absolutely, you can, per, anybody, anybody can and should perform our shows. Yeah. And I'm Thanks, sure you've Lily. heard. That's a great question. Yeah. And I'm sure you've heard too of groups. I know I've heard of groups that'll have sp specifically schools, like you said, where they're trying to get more people involved that will have casts of 10 or 15 people. Uh, do the show and I, that I, for me I, I have a hard time wrapping my head I'm like how does that work but for me personally I feel like a lot of the comedy comes from just there's three people that are trying to cover all of this right the limitation and, the limitations are comic yes agree right yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah there still needs to be urgency in the fact that it needs to be done in two hours I mean the other problem that many folks have when they do our scripts is they they forget about the urgent need to get this done in two hours and they go oh well it'll all be funny or they go oh shit this is oh sorry very sorry i swear um <laughs> or they uh right. <laughs> they um or, or, or they think oh my god this is a this is this is a comedy so it needs to be funny every single moment and it doesn't it needs to be earnest and important every single moment but let the laughs land where the laughs want to land yeah. Um, uh, Reed, Reed has been teaching, uh, in the Bay area in California and he has directed he, last year, he directed books. And I think right now, although right now I think he's doing it mostly online at, uh, at, at a university in Stockton. Um, he's oh, done. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, he has been, the, yeah, no, university of Pacific? Yeah, yeah, we live there. That's right. Um, yeah. that's right. Well, he's teaching there and right now he is working with his students to, update and diversify the completely Hollywood abridged, you know, because oh, there's a lot of, I mean, Lily's question is spot on about, because, because he, like a year or two ago, he did all the great books at um, Santa Rosa junior college with a, with a diverse and, 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 and fluid gender uh, cast. And he said it was great. And he, and he developed it for like 12 people. So we're trying to create 
evolve the scripts, I guess, adapt the scripts in such a way so that it's easier for companies to kind of adapt it to their own personnel. Um, and, and particularly in a, in a show like Hollywood, um, you know, the movies are 15 year old references. So they're right. updating, updating the references, but also there's a little, there's some comedy, there's some kinds of jokes in there that don't land as well anymore <laughs> as they used to. Uh, and yeah. so you have to find new, better jokes. I really don't, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of comedians going, well, you can't tell, I can't tell my jokes. You know what? You just got to tell better jokes. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting that you say that with, cause we had a, an, not an issue, but just the question had come up during the book show. There's um, during Don, Don Quixote mm. um, of somebody questioning it. Like, do, do you think that this would offend people with yeah. the, the kind of over-exaggeration of the accent and that sort of stuff? Yeah. Um, and I said, I don't think so. Yeah. Right. So, I don't like that. What do I think? I don't care. Well, yeah. <clears throat> they ad I think they addressed this in the um uh, in Reed's production because again he had a larger cast, so he had different translators and his translators, I think, uh uh were native Spanish speakers. So uh, they okay, were yeah. so they were able to throw in both real and better digs <laughs> at <laughs> at how bad this translation was. Um so that was really fun. I mean, not every theater has a native, a native Spanish speaking uh, cast available to them, but when you yeah. do, there are. It, it's just it's it, you it it's so there's so much greater opportunity for comedy, which is what I love about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's a uh, you know one thing that I think is really cool um, that you probably could speak more to that when you guys go on the road and do a show you're in that position where you can do those rewrites like that. Um, can you talk a little bit how much that happens on the road? If you guys are ever in a, if you, that situation ever comes up and you say, well, let's see if we can rework this. Yeah. Um, we, kind of um, fly, but. we, we, I mean, <laughs> you've been on the road with us, as you know, when we get to some place, we, we like to show up as close to curtain as we possibly can because <laughs> we're just lazy. Um, um, but we also ask the local crew for what is the what's going on in your town? You know, what's the what's the local other town that we make fun of? You know, what's the scandal? What's the politician that's gotten into trouble or what's the what's everybody talking about? So we try to get yeah. those kind of jokes into the show. Um, uh, but uh, there have been times where we have to kind of rewrite on the fly. Well, for instance, that time we did <clears throat> that time we did the Bible show two years ago at, up in Maine. The um, we hadn't done it in nine or ten years, and one trunk didn't arrive. One trunk got lost in the shipment, and it was the trunk. Fortunately, for what was it? Oh, it was the trunk that had the dummy in it, and the <laughs> and the Last Supper backdrop. Oh, so nice. the Last Supper backdrop it has it's a it's a recreation of the la of the last supper painting by da vinci by da vinci yeah my, yeah my, yeah michelangelo I, I i don't know i should really know my renaissance painters um in any event uh, in any event it, it has yeah. all the all the saints next to jesus at the table have holes for faces come out <clears throat> and one person is supposed to go from hole to hole to hole to hole to hole to hole usually you brent um yeah doing all the saints well there's no bit without that drop so we just cut it. We cut it, you know, and we just and, and yeah. fortunately it, that second act of Bible is so sort of modal. You can cut things. Um, yeah. But we also had to figure out a dummy, you know, created a dummy from cush pillow cushions from the back. Um, <laughs> we speaking of dummies, uh, one of the other times we went, we went to a venue. We were doing the sports show uh, at a venue where recently one of the students i want to say or somebody somebody recently had committed suicide by jumping off a high place oh, and man. and like within the week or something like that and so and we of course of course we have a moment in the sports show where a a, a dummy falls down from the flies from the theater to the stage oh, <clears throat> cuz that's a bit it's a diving you know olympic diving bit where the <laughs> dummy just hits the floor well you know you're not going to do that that's at, yeah. That's the definition of hashtag too soon. Um, right. You know, so these are kinds of the, the kinds of 
they're small rewrites, the kinds of things we have to do, adjustments that we have to make do on the road. But for instance, the complete history of America abridged, um, we are go we were we were going to do a major sort of rewrite of that, an update of it to tour this fall, but we had a summer we had a summer gig that was going to happen and now it's not going to happen. So I'm not exactly sure what our timeline is going to be for that. But the complete history of America, they keep right. <laughs> They keep writing American history, so we keep having to reduce it. So we have to keep coming up with new, more recent material to keep that one alive. And also, that show has some jokes that you kind of are hard to tell. <clears throat> these yeah. Days. So that's due for a sort of a, a kind of a major upgrade, that script. Yeah. Well, the Lincoln joke is always, that always cracked because the, you never, the audience was either going to go, oh, or they're hysterically. You know? And, 50-50 most of the time. Well, and that's a, another example of people look at our joke about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and they go, too soon. <laughs> yeah. It's been 160 years? Yeah. Mm. Still fresh. Still fresh. <laughs> to the wound is still uh, fresh. Yeah. I have uh, a couple more questions here I want to get to. Uh, but Oh, oh, this is from the Matthew Croak. Matthew Croak? Yes. He says... <laughs> You both have high stakes in live theater. What does the industry look like in six months? What are you hearing? That's that's a far more serious question than I wanted from young Matt Croak. Matt Croak, yeah. <clears throat> for people for for the other five people watching this um, who don't <laughs> know, Matt Croak um, was Adam Long's first replacement in the Reduced Shakespeare Company. Adam Long, one of the founding members, uh, Matt Croak joined us for when we did the Complete Works. Well, you Shakespeare abridged. He uh, was on the first one of the early tours of the Complete History of America abridged. He actually did the very first workshop and tours of the Bible and workshopped and wrote all the great books abridged with us. And so uh, uh, he's been around for a good long while. Yeah, I, you know what? I don't know what it looks like in six months. It, it depends on how this thing plays out in the summer. I, I don't know how it, what it's going to look like in two months. Hopefully, we're all back to normal in two months. I have been talking to a handful of artistic directors who had to cancel shows, like you have had to cancel shows. And <clears throat> they're thinking of how do they fit the show they were going to do into next season right. or, or a future season. Um, yeah, it feels like 21, like like 2021 seasons or 21, 22 seasons are going to be the lost seasons, you know, all, right. all the shows we, we had to do. Um, I said earlier, Matt Croak, maybe before you joined us that, uh, spring of 20, next spring, a year from now, I was looking kind of strong because, because our shows from this spring have been moved into next spring, which already had some good dates. Um, what do you think, Brent? You're the one actually running a real theater. Well, I, I mean, you kind of said it. Yeah. We're, you know, if we do end up canceling the show, which looks like we probably will have to, we'll, um, we're planning on moving that just to next year, um, almost similar dates. And what's really been great though, is the, um, you know, all the rights holders for all these shows are just getting pummeled. I, I mean, it's, I, uh, um, the woman that we deal with uh, through MTI the other day. Oh, right. And she said, before all this happened, I was starting to feel good and caught up with my inbox being at 700 emails. <laughs> she said, now, I, now it's up over 1400. Mm. And it's just people, you know, with, can we postpone this? Can we move these dates? Can we change the dates for that and all that stuff. And for the most part, they've all been really accommodating. Um, because I mean, rights aren't cheap. I, 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 for us, that that is one of our biggest expenses is just paying for the rights for you know, spe especially the bigger musicals that sure. you do. Um, but uh, they've been really good at. We're able to kind of move, um, you know, move payments for certain things and apply it to other shows and and that sort of stuff. So, um, you know that that's been a, a huge help because to not even have a show, but then still having to pay for it as if you've had it. Yeah. That, that would be detrimental. But I think they all, it, she and she even said, everybody's in the same boat. They just, they don't know where they're at. And like I said earlier, you know, we're just praying that everything kind of clears up before June. Right. Um, because if it doesn't, then, then that opens a whole new box of concerns and issues of yeah, how do you have an event center, but not, have events 
Well, we were <clears throat> we were talking uh, uh, before that I was on a um, a virtual uh, happy hour the other night. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and I need to do more of them because that was kind of a virtual unhappy hour because we were just talking about uh, how horrible this all is, and uh, I can do that by myself. I don't yeah. need help with that, <laughs> particularly with alcohol. But um, but you know, some people, a couple of folks were complaining that oh my god, I'm not getting anything done. I'm not getting anything done. And uh, uh somebody said this perfectly on Twitter, and I'm going to bastardize it now, but I retweeted it because it was perfect. It was like if you are staying home and preventing further spread of this thing, you are being productive. <laughs> right, know? yeah. You are doing what needs to be done. Um, yeah. And I think that the more we stay home, the more we, you know, fight this thing, the more we're, you know, we work together, <laughs> the more we uh, work together by staying apart, um, the faster this thing will pass. Right. You know, and um, I don't know, all I can do is keep my fingers crossed that, that the people who are too stupid to do this don't infect too many other people. Right. Yeah. Well, that's like I said, I told you earlier too, we, we've pretty much been on lockdown for the last two weeks. We yeah. went out once to kind of get some essentials, but yeah. uh, I ran down to the theater yesterday just to kind of check on things and grab a few things. And it was, it was surprising to me how many people were out and about. Yeah. And it's not necessarily even just kind of walking, but going into places and um, it's, it's just a crazy thought to think everything can shut down like that. And yeah, but yeah, like you said, it's what we need to do to, to yeah. stop it. <clears throat> it is, it is. It's um, and, uh, and of course, you know, every time I, it's like I, when I read Stephen King's the stand, every time I have a sniffle, I'll go, Oh, oh my God, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's, and even just going out yesterday for a little bit, it's like you're surprised at how much you want to touch your face. You're like, <laughs> well, yeah, and I was I did. Yeah. <laughs> what are, you don't think about the un, the unexpected victims of the thing. What are philosophers going to do? People who do this all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, think of them. Um, <clears throat> somebody asked us, somebody emailed us, said, can you can you reduce the COVID-19 virus? We need to laugh. And you know, talk about too soon. Um, it seems like we're still too close to be funny about it. But also, I mean, one other thing that we are doing, I mean, I I love what you're doing to do having this little Q&A <clears throat> for the people who want to participate and be part of an online community. You know, it's great that there are folks talking. And and the other thing yeah. that we're doing is that we've, I've put a link up on our website, reducedshakespeare.com, um, which I noticed you had, there was a banner crawling, but, and there it is. Yeah, Jude, there it is. So organized. Yeah. At ReduceShakespeare.com, I put up a, a specific page in the news section. Um, we started calling ourselves the R the RSC, the Remote Shakespeare Company. Uh, <laughs> and I'm putting a page up that has just has links and embedded videos of, of, of a lot of the different stuff we've done over the years. So we reduced oh, that's cool. Wagner's Ring Cycle, 17 hours of opera to a, a brief and palatable 23 minutes. Um <laughs> Uh, that we reduced the first five seasons of the TV show Lost to 10 minutes. And that's on there, including an introduction from the show's creators, Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse. Um, I sang my song, uh, uh, I Laughed Till I Cried from the comedy show. That's there. I also did, uh, I recited um, uh, the the first draft version of William Shakespeare's Sonnet 18. <laughs> Um, you can hear that it, it begins. It's a clumsy. It's a clumsy first draft. You can see why he wanted to change it because it begins. Shall I compare thee to a dog's dinner? <laughs> and it goes on from there. Um, but so anyway, reduceshakespeare.com. We've got a lot of content. Plus, I've been doing this as you mentioned. I've been doing a podcast for since since December of two thousand six. So yeah, over thirteen was, years ago. I was going to ask you about that too because that it, have you missed? It's a weekly podcast that you produce and host as well. Have you missed a single week of that? I only missed one week because uh, my laptop went down <clears throat> and I need, and it got needed to get repaired. So it came out that Monday's podcast came out, I think on the Thursday or whatever, or, 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 or I, I put up two the following week. So I've still been, yeah, I've, I've, I've still caught up. I have, I am now, let's see, this week's episode is 693. I've been oh, doing it for 693 weeks. <laughs> it's oh, been, it's really fun 
if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. That's what well, I was. I actually had it on the other day and our oldest son, Parker, came into the room and he was listening to it for a few minutes. And um, I was like, hey, you know, you got a shout out on this. That's right. Uh, right after you were born. He goes, really? I'm like, yeah, let me try and find it. And I, was, I just got lost. I'm like, <laughs> I have no idea where this would be. Um, yeah, we should scroll. Uh, did you search? You should search for Parker Tubbs. I thought we mentioned him in the in the blurb for it. it yeah. Well, like in the written. Yeah. Okay. I'll search. search for it. I don't know that I searched for it. I think I was just scrolling through all search of them. Search for Parker's name because I think I think we I wrote it up in the blurb. And if I didn't, I will I will adjust, fix that. Um, okay. But yeah, no, it's been really it started, the podcast started as a as kind of a and again, it was Matthew Croak who urged me, inspired me, challenged me put a gun to my head and said, you've got to do this. Um, uh, and once I figured out, oh, it's something that I can do remotely. I can do wherever we are. You know, I've been, I, I record on this, on this iPod. Um, oh my gosh. I know it's an original. I've been using the same iPod since 2006. And I, <laughs> and I, and I use this Belkin tune talk microphone and it clicks. I recognize it and, that. and it's a great microphone. Cause it really takes, I can record anywhere in a bar, in a coffee shop, on a plane, and it puts it it puts the voices right up front, and it and it puts the noise in the background to the back, and um, it sounds it really sounds surprisingly good. Um, yeah. And we talk about it started as a like a, a a DVD bonus feature, you know, it's like oh well here's a skit or here's some funny conversation about whatever. But then it became I think my first non RSC interview was with David Keckner the second city alum and actor and improviser from, um, from second city uh, 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 who's been in anchor man and a bunch of other things, the yeah. office. Um, anyway, he, th cause then I began to think, wait a second, I got a ton of really successful friends that I can interview about how they do what they do. And so it, it's become more of a, it's sort of my weekly college lecture that's not a lecture it's more like a Q&A conversation where i talk to interesting people in the theater and the arts about what they do and how they do it you yeah. know so i get i've talked to like Brian Dennehy the great tony winning actor Brian Dennehy from Brian Dennehy to Weird Al Yankovic you know <laughs> and everybody in between novelists like Chris Moore and Jasper Ford and Nicole Galland and you know it's just been a fun it's fun. I, you know, it's great for me because it gets me yeah. out of the house and I get to have fun conversations with folks. Well, and that's kind of how the birth of this whole thing started was with, like I said, with the QC Rock Academy, um, right. interviewed the drummer for, I think it was Brad Pays, something like that. Um, but I, I was watching it. And I'm like, man, this this is really cool. And then I started thinking, I'm like, hey, I know people. <laughs> I, I can I can call them up. I can yeah. see, get them here. Yeah. I see tomorrow. Yeah. Do, do I see tomorrow you've got Hal Lublin? Yep, Hal Lublin's on tomorrow. Uh, Please the, send all my Lublin to Hal. All my Lublin. Lublin. Which, and I just saw it, so I listened to that, uh, uh, We Got This, and then noticed that you were on there for picking the best uh, Shakespeare play. That was a really and, fun conversation. Yeah, those guys are so much fun. It, it went on uh, way too long. <laughs> <laughs> I did it, I, I but I abridged it. I reduced it for an episode of my podcast. Just taking, oh, did you? taking the highlights, but there's still a lot of gold that I cut. You know, Hal, yeah. Hal is one of my former students. Um, really? Yeah. He, uh, I, I, for a very brief period, David Rosowski, who we both yeah. know, hired yeah. me to teach sketch writing at Second City Hollywood. And no, Hal, I that. yeah, and Hal was in my class, and clearly one of the only two or three people who really should be doing this. Cause I said, I did. I said, I said to Rosowski, I said, let me, I, he said, you know, there's like 10 people in this class, seven of them, five of them easily need to be told to just get out, to just never <laughs> even think about writing comedy again, you know? And he said, let me explain how the economics of this place works. <laughs> they pay us and we teach them. Oh, ah, right. Got it. Got it. All right. <laughs> But Hal was not one of those. Hal was easily like, oh, my God, this guy's great. That is hilarious. Yeah, well, that would have been – I can't believe I never realized that before because that would have been probably right around the same time that I was there. Well, Hal doesn't brag about it as much as he should. 
True. I, I think that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. Well, it's 1146. I got one. I think I found one more question on here that I want to make sure we get to. Okay. Um, this question comes from Adam. Yes. I know that. All right. I know the question already. Yes. Yeah. I am wearing pants. <laughs> I know I contemplated just having pajama <laughs> bottoms on. Uh, this is like the first time I've showered and dressed and who knows how long. So. Um, his question is, what advice would you give a freshman acting class about surviving the industry? Mm. Pick another industry. Uh, <laughs> do something else. Um, <clears throat> and that's semi-serious uh, a, a suggestion. Um, you know, we, we spent uh, our kids, our, our daughter's a sophomore in college now, and our son graduated. So he's out. And we we spent their whole lives telling them not to go into the business, <laughs> you know. Um, but we were in the business showing them that it could be done. Yeah. Uh, you could succeed in this business. So <clears throat> uh, our son was on the in the acapella group in college and on the college improv team. Our daughter is on the improv team and also the director of their um, of the of the student group that puts on exclusively new plays like oh. two or three or four of them every term oh, wow. <clears throat> and she's the president of this group now so she's a theater major and so she said yeah screw you dad i'm, I'm gonna do this <laughs> and she's just fierce and competitive enough competitive enough that it might work actually she, she might do very well yeah. um but you know we always tell people going into college um you know get out and if we can convince, what's the guy's name? Adam? Adam. Yeah. yeah. Adam, if we can convince you to get out, then you should get out. If you say, screw you, old man, I'm going to do this, then that's the right attitude. <laughs> that's the only That's the only attitude you can have to kind of succeed because there's no one way of succeeding. Right. Uh, surround yourself with good people. Uh, don't be a dick. And that's true for any industry. Don't just don't be a dick. Be somebody that somebody wants to work with. Be ta become talented and invaluable so people want you around in any capacity. Be multifaceted. Play a musical instrument if you want to be an actor. Know how to sing and dance. Be well read. Don't, you know, try to double major. Try to major in something else while still, um, you know, majoring in theater or, or, or still doing plays. I would argue don't get a BFA because um, most BFAs are like, are like, uh, industrial workshop classes. They only train you for the one thing. There are BFAs that are more varied and allow you to uh, diversify your portfolio, if I can use that expression, um, where they allow you to write and direct. My my nephew got a BFA at, from Chapman. Um, uh, isn't that where Sarah went? Didn't Sarah go to Chapman? No, she went to Fullerton. Fullerton. Okay, sorry. Um, but the BFA at Chapman is apparently quite good and allows you to really diversify where you learn to write and direct and edit and and, and do things, stuff on film as well as doing plays. Um, but a BA gives you just more opportunity. Just, you know, the, the best actors that I know are also the smartest actors. You know, they're, they're, they're well-read. They're interested in current events. They're, you know, they bring passion for other things to their craft. And if you're an improviser, Brent, you know this, you play to the top of your intelligence. And the more you know, the better the improviser you can be. Yeah. And also, it's, just, it's, a good as a, it's a good as reason to go to college as any, which is the more you know, the more there is to laugh at. Yeah. You know, the more jokes you will get. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think you hit it, too, that it's not... There's no one way to do it. I, it's, uh, um, you know, we both lived short time and or, or not short time, but um, I saw people uh, that w I knew in college in Fresno yeah. that had no interest in theater. They came down to LA within four months. They were on their first feature in, wow. you know, I had been there for four years just trying to get an agent. So it's, there's just, there's no real clear, this is how you do it. This is how you right. get into the business. It's just every case is different. If you're shockingly beautiful, Adam, go to LA. Maybe you can get, <laughs> maybe <laughs> someone will take a look at you and then be very happy that you happen to be talented as well. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was in LA for 15 years and then the business changed and uh, I was playing a lot of doctors and lawyers on TV and I got to that awkward age where I was too old to play a lawyer, but too young to play a judge. So it was... <laughs> <laughs> Time to move back to Chicago where my wife had been a, 
uh, had been a writer and a performer at Second City. And we love Chicago. I mean, that's another, that's more good advice if you want to get into theater. If you've come out of, got your degree and you want to act, Chicago is a great place to go uh, when it's not shut down because of a virus. Um, because not only can you find a tribe, find a community of actors, um, you can find audiences. Audiences in Chicago will go to storefront theaters because you can't learn to act by doing it in a classroom or your bedroom. You've got to be working with other people and uh, and and putting shows up in front of an audience. That's how you learn, re uh, re really. That's how you get experience. Um, yeah. And you need that audience. And audiences are sometimes hard to come by. But Chicago, you can get an audience. Yeah. I I don't know what it's like in the uh, in the throbbing metroplex of the Quad Cities. You know, it's actually uh, when we opened up, we counted because our first thought was does the quad cities need another theater and we are actually the ninth theater wow uh, to open up here in the quad cities there's it's a lot of theater uh options here that's it's, awesome um, yeah yeah I, everything from you know bigger we have a professional theater downtown rock island and um to smaller black box theaters that do original works that uh, there's a couple original playwrights in the area and they've put on their own shows and really good stuff too. So well, it's, and that's a, and that's another great alternative for people, you know, yeah. <laughs> go to the quad cities, stay in your own town, put up, put up shows. And then when you feel like you've got enough experience, then go to, if you yeah. want to make your living at it, then go to LA or Chicago or New York or Seattle or at places that have professional theaters or start yeah. your own professional theater. You know, that's a whole, that's a whole other Q and a. <laughs> yes. Yes. Join us next month for that one. <laughs> when most of us are getting out. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, getting back to Matt Croak's question too. I mean, some theaters might not survive this. Uh, Ooh, absolutely. And, and that's a scary thought. And then what will rise in the ashes of that, you know? Right. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're laughing and joking, but you know, it's, it's tough for a lot of folks. I mean, you and I are, are very lucky. We've got we've got play, homes we can shelter in. Right. You know, yeah. a, a lot of people don't. They're in dorms or they're in other situations. And you know, we're yeah. so, you know, knock wood, we're kind of lucky. Yeah, yeah, very lucky. It's it's a scary situation to be in yeah. for sure. Um uh, any, uh, any other questions? I never did figure out how to uh, watch this on Facebook myself. I don't think so. Any impertinent comments? Any questions you skipped over? Like, well, Mike, well, I, assuming that this is uh, in reference to your hopefully the comment to Adam, hopefully he's very uh, good looking. He said, Well, I don't like to brag. Ha! Dot, dot. Good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's that sort of self confidence. Yeah. It's that fine line between, of, between self confidence and being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure which of the line I fall on in there. <laughs> You're not an asshole, Brent Tubbs. I remember <laughs> you I remember you told us about some person you didn't enjoy working with, and I thought, oh my God, if Brent Tubbs doesn't get along with this person, that's not a good sign because you get along with everybody. I try to. That was that was a test for sure. That was, yeah, the test that nobody should be forced to yeah. put themselves to. <laughs> Well, all right. I don't want to take your time anymore. And thank you so much again for doing this. Happy um, to do it. Happy to do it. And now, and now I know how StreamYard works. This is fun. Yeah, isn't this cool? Super easy. You can't see my cat that just ran up the uh, <laughs> the spiral staircase. And this is perfect because I do need another cup of tea. Ah, oh, perfect timing then. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Thank. This absolutely. has been fun. It was so great catching up and seeing you, seeing you live, uh, not in person, but <laughs> well, in your well, face. As 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 in person as as we can be for the moment. Yeah, sending virtual hugs. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, cool. uh, thanks to everybody that's been watching. Um, we the, enjoyed talking to both of you. Yes. Yeah. We loved seeing both your comments. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, make uh, if feel free to share this. The video should be uh, shareable here in a minute. Awesome. So. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You bet, Brett. Thanks. All right. Take care. You too. Bye.